Welcome to the fifth part of our exploration into the Wellhausen Hypothesis, titled, Signs of Unity. In this episode, we delve into the compelling evidence of unity within the Torah's narratives. Critics have often pointed to perceived inconsistencies to argue for multiple sources. However, a closer examination reveals an astounding harmony and intentional design in these ancient texts. First, let's consider the story of Tamar in Genesis 38. Scholars like J. Wellhausen, Gunkel, and Proksh have variously attributed this chapter to different sources. Yet a meticulous analysis shows an intricate internal connection between this chapter and its surrounding context, particularly in its linguistic patterns and thematic elements. This interweaving of narratives suggests a deliberate and unified composition rather than a random assemblage of sources. Similarly, the narrative architecture in the account of the first nine plagues in Egypt, as recognized by Rashbaum and Abarbanel, reveals a sophisticated literary design. This design, apparent in the recurring phrases and structured grouping of the plagues, challenges the source critic's view of a haphazard compilation. It's more plausible that a single skilled author, rather than multiple sources, crafted these narratives with a clear cohesive vision. Moving on we find repeated themes and words that underscore the unity of the Torah's narrative. A striking example is found in the story of Abraham and the four kings in Genesis 14 and the covenant in Genesis 15. Despite appearing as separate themes, a careful examination of the language used reveals a deliberate connection between these chapters, suggesting a single author's intent to link these events thematically. Furthermore, the use of chiastic structures and parallelisms in the Torah's text points to a single author's sophisticated literary technique. For instance, the narrative of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11 employs such structures, emphasizing the story's coherence and intentionality. This complexity in narrative construction is unlikely to be the product of multiple disjointed sources. Even in places where contradictions seem to appear, a deeper understanding of the text reveals a harmonious unity. For example, the apparent contradiction in the laws about erecting pillars can be understood in the context of their Canaanite idolatrous practices. This insight suggests that the Torah's laws were not randomly compiled, but were thoughtfully arranged to address specific historical and cultural contexts. The echoes of the Torah in the prophetic books further reinforce the idea of unity. For example, the life of David in the book of Samuel has remarkable parallels with the story of Jacob in Genesis. These intertextual connections across different books of the Bible suggest a cohesive narrative framework that spans the entire canon. In conclusion, the evidence of unity in the Torah's narratives is not only compelling but also inspiring. It challenges us to look beyond the surface and appreciate the depth, complexity, and intentionality of these ancient texts. This understanding enriches our appreciation of the Torah, not as a patchwork of disparate sources but as a unified, divinely inspired masterpiece. As we continue our journey through the Wellhausen Hypothesis, let us keep an open mind and a keen eye for the signs of unity that bind these timeless stories together. The Torah's narrative, in all its complexity and sophistication, invites us to explore and discover the profound wisdom embedded in its unified structure. Thank you for joining me in this insightful exploration of the Wellhausen Hypothesis. Stay tuned for more episodes as we uncover the rich tapestry of biblical narratives and their enduring impact on our understanding of history, faith, and literature.